I'm a hunter. Now, I know it's Christmas, and I thought about doing a Christmas related movie review, but you know what? In the end, I decided to review a low budget, crappy vampire movie. It is terrible. Don the Dragon Wilson. Who? He's a martial artist, but don't worry about that. And in the film, he's called Jack Cutter. So the gist of the plot is he hunts down vampires and as a result of killing some in a restaurant, he has the cops chasing him. That's it. It's brilliant. Now, it begins with Jack as a child seeing both of his parents killed by vampires. Just another normal day. Jump 27 years into the future and he's older, obviously, and he still carries around with him a book that tells him where all vampires live. Well, that's awesome and I guess it's a good job that vampires never move house, but, you know, let's not nitpick this early in the game. So his book clearly told him that the vampires who killed his parents would be in 27 years eating in a fancy restaurant and this is where he gets to show off some of his skills which got him the nickname of the dragon I guess. Now it looks like an earthquake is taking place don't you think? But for whatever brainless reason the director thought that it was a good idea to shake the camera around like this for the entire fight sequence. Look at it! It takes that shaky cam technique that certain talentless filmmakers use in their action scenes and elevates it to a whole new level. It's so bad, and I mean life-threateningly bad. Now, I don't believe that I've seen another movie starring Don the Dragon Wilson, but surely they can't be this inept, surely. Although, I am half tempted to find out now. So, with the evil vampires dead, does that mean that the film is over and we can move on to happier times? Sadly not. So the cops are now after Jack, and when they spot him by pure chance, an amazing chase begins, but it's brought to an abrupt end when he's run over by a nosy reporter. Drive! Go! Go! Okay, okay. Uh, I'm not from around here, so I have no idea where I am. Where do you want me to go? What's that cop trying to do? He was fine a moment ago, and earlier on in the chase, he also told Jack to freeze and gets annoyed when he doesn't obey. Freeze! I said freeze! Maybe he just doesn't like running or something because people laugh at him. Anyway, you know how this film is called Night Hunter? Well, maybe I'm just nitpicking here, but most of the film takes place during the day, and furthermore, the vampires walk around in the daylight. See this buffoon? He's the vampire leader, and he'll no doubt have an epic fight with our main man Jack, but there's plenty more rubbish to mention before that actually happens. Kinda looks like Keanu Reeves in The Matrix. Maybe he based his look on this Muppet. But you know what? I expect great things from this vampire, and I'm sure that he will deliver. Sit down. I order you. He killed Carmela, and we are just going to sit here? Do nothing? Sit down! Wow, that is priceless acting. I love that. Now, his general plan as an evil vampire is this. We must feed so that we may breed. <laughs> That's one lame plan, which obviously is why this film is so engaging and awesome, but when he overacts like that, it keeps you just about from gouging out your own eyes. The acting in this film, from all yeah, involved, is solid, and when I say solid, I mean solid as a bar of wood. It's wooden to the point that you can carve out furniture from their performances. I mean, I don't expect great Oscar winning stuff here, but at least don't be nodding and winking at the camera with your acting like the head vampire Neo. We must feed. Back with our main man, and he fills in the reporter with some exposition. They were vampires. They were vampires? What do you mean, like, Bela Lugosi vampires? See, now, even if they were, like, Bela Lugosi vampires, this would be better. Even his stock footage role in Plan 9 from Outer Space would be a welcome addition, just for amusement purposes. Man, I really wish I was reviewing Plan 9 from Outer Space instead of this bag of bollocks. So Lugosi, who our friend just simply calls old man, like he's not even worthy enough to have a proper name, is depressed about his wife's death and he walks away. Never to return again. Anyway, I'm going to try and keep this short if I can before I die, but let Jack give us just a little bit of information. So you came here to kill them? With what, silver bullets or wooden stakes or something? You have to break their backs. Whoa, 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 surely that just means they'll be paralysed then? They'll still be able to roll around in wheelchairs or be permanently confined to bed, but they'll still be alive. Jack's so stupid that he probably thinks there's no vampires left in the world, when really all the hospitals are full of crippled vampires making plans on breeding. Man, this movie sucks. Do you remember the fight scene that took place in the restaurant? Well, guess what? Yep, another earthquake takes place.
Look! Words fail me. I mean, I seriously find it hard to believe that everyone in the making of this film thought that it actually looked good. Surely one single person could have said, hey, maybe at least putting an earthquake sound and dubbing someone saying, oh shit, the tectonic plates sure do move around a lot in this area, to at least try and cover up the fact that the director just wanted to shake the camera around because he's a moron. I mean, seriously? Does it work? Is it adding any extra quality to your viewing experience? No, of course not, unless you've got brain damage. Maybe you have. I apologise, I'm sorry. Then there's another fight, but this is a double whammy as it adds strobe light into the earthquake shaking, so it just makes it super cool and fantastic. Now, one thing about this fight is at least it's set at night time, so now Jack can actually live up to his name of the Night Hunter, but how stupid is he here? The vampire flies directly up into the air and he looks all around all confused. It's unbelievable. I mean, seriously, wow. I can't even believe I live on this planet. Anyway. Now, all the characters are pretty dumb at the best of times, not to mention one-dimensional and so bland that you think they're not actually real people, they're just pieces of paper coloured in to look like people. They're so uninspiring and dull, it's actually quite mesmerising. But then, if they were interesting and fleshed out, it wouldn't make the film as bad as it actually is, and then I wouldn't be taking a look at it most likely, so there you go, I'm actually glad that they're made out of paper. Now, something else that happens in every fight scene is the same piece of music. It doesn't matter what the mood, tone, or the setting is, you get to hear this music every time you enjoy the earthquake shaking. <laughs> Time some more great things from the villain now, like some awesome facial expressions and boisterous laughing at our hero. Or how about when he wants to vanish in front of Jack, he slides off the screen so we can't see him, but amazingly he disappears from Cutter's view too, despite standing directly in front of him. This is amazing. Just look at his face here, he is the worst hero I have ever seen on screen. He's got the intelligence of 80s cartoon characters like He-Man and Lionheart. Yeah, they were meant to be the heroes and the star, but they were thick as fuck. So things move along with the fighting, talking, walking around for ages, then another fight, more talking and walking around for ages, etc, etc. So when the ending finally arrives, don't expect anything out of the ordinary. An eclipse takes place, even though it's still daylight outside in the next shot. A cop teams up with Cutter to help save the day, and he's got a Tash too, so he's a legend already. And check out this line from him. I'm running out of time. I don't like this. It scares the shit out of me. Split up. So he's scared, yet he wants to split up and be on his own. What's that phrase? Oh yeah. You goon! Speaking of goons, check out the girliest scream of pain ever from a vampire. The same asshole can't even do maths as he says. I spread your life 25 years ago. <laughs> Yet the titles state from 1968 to 1995, which is 27 years by my reckoning. You proper goon! So it's the ending which sees Jack Cutter fighting this guy who, like everyone else before him, manages to kick Cutter's ass, which means we get to him crying pain all the time. Seriously, everyone kicks his ass. It's like a running gag. Just check this out. Come on! Now, the ending takes place on top of a building in daylight. I swear his shades must be super glued onto his face because they never fly off or break and Cutter simply takes them off and snaps his neck. Good, I love that. What a wonderful ending to a cinematic piece of gold. In summary, it's a catastrophic nightmare that gives you a headache from the very first minute and it doesn't stop until you go to sleep and try to forget that you've wasted your time watching such mundane drivel. I mean, most of the crap that I review is dull for large sections, but this makes you as sleepy as a sloth. Hell, it probably possesses some otherworldly ability to turn you into one when you fall asleep. Just don't waste your time unless you like to endure earthquake fight sequences. So, there you go, Night Hunter, 1 out of 10. Now, if you're debating whether to watch this movie, my advice is wait until night time and then 
Read my new novel, Hunter. See what I did there? Night Hunter? Night Hunter? Brilliant. Well done. <laughs> so that's it for this year, I'm afraid, shitcase cinema fans. Um, I'd just like to wish you all the very best for this forthcoming year, 2018. If you're watching this in the future, then you'll be like, wow, we're in 2019 now, 2020. But, you know, don't worry about that, it's okay. So, Merry Christmas, yada yada yada. Thanks for your support as always. By Hunter, by JD Ashton. That's my real name, I'm not called Johnny Shitcase. Look, there's my handsome, devilishly good looking picture on the back. <laughs> buy it. Don't buy it. Your prerogative. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. See you later.